Yes, the tomb is empty. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. We are here at the garden tomb in Jerusalem and earlier this morning hundreds of people came to this beautiful garden in order to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Last week we spoke about the death of Jesus and his centrality, the centrality of the cross. And we learned how Paul wrote to the church of Corinth that when he came to them, he knew nothing else than Jesus Christ and him crucified. But then Paul writes to the very same church. He says, if Christ is not risen from the dead, then our faith is futile. That means Paul gives uttermost importance to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's important also for us today to understand why this tomb indeed needs to be empty. Paul understood that the resurrection of Christ also assured his very own resurrection. Paul reasoned if Christ rose from the dead, so also he one day will raise from the dead. And it was this resurrection hope which kept Paul going. It was like an engine in his life. To the church in Corinth he writes, If in this life only we hope in Christ, then we are of all men the most pitiable. Now this is quite a challenging and a radical statement. Many times we as believers, we look only on the blessings which we receive from Christ here on earth. But Paul understood there was a greater reality waiting for him. His life in ministry was not an easy one. Many times he was in dangers on the road, yes, even on the sea. He was beaten many times from Romans and sometimes even from his own countrymen. But he understood that it's worth it all because he knew there is a resurrection waiting for him, which would transfer him to a new reality. He would receive an in eternal inheritance from God. And this was the resurrection power which Paul believed in. And there is another aspect of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, which Paul understood. He understood that this power which rose Jesus from the dead is working within us as believers. It's this power which changes our lives, which makes us to the people which God wants us to be. But also it empowers our ministry. The ministry of the early church was the most powerful ministry. Many people got saved through their ministry. People got healed, delivered, even resurrected from the dead. And it's exactly this power which we need in our churches, in our lives today. And Paul understood that this resurrection power was crucial for every single believer and every single church he was ministering to. That's why he was praying in the following way for the church in Ephesus, but also for many more churches. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. May the Lord bless you here from Jerusalem and empower you with his resurrection power wherever the Lord has placed you. God bless you. Now available from our online web store, the 2011 Feast of Tabernacles Highlights DVD. Visit www.icej.tv for more details.